Oh, everyone. This is going to be what Deku was Raiden. Now, how is this going to work? Actually, before I even start, this should I should say this. If YouTube hears anything in the background, I do not own it. If YouTube sees anything in this, sh well, video that is not owned by me, I don't own it. And there will be, in all my videos, there's always something in the description that states I don't own anything in this video. Now, with that, let's get into the story. When Deku is being born by Inko Midoriya, Inko is a very sought after woman. Not be actually a very sought after woman in the military. Why? Well, she was ex Marine, so she was in the military, and she signed up for whenever she did get a kid, she wanted the kid to be very strong. And oh boy, there was a lot of genetic modifications to that boy, aka Daku. Just yeah, his name still is, is, is not going to be written, it's still going to be Iz Izuka Midoriya. Though his code name is going to be Raiden, or his fake name is going to be Raiden, and his AKA name that we all know and love is Jack the Ripper. So yeah, and if you're all wondering, I understand what his more or less physical bo that body can do. Like it turns l something with like body fluids into like energy source or some crap like that. Think of that power just as a quirk. That's basically his quirk. To put it short. And when Deku is, well, being born, yeah, seeing he was such a soft after kid, but because he was such, so much genetically modified, yeah, Inko, I'm very sorry, but after a little while, Inko died from a supposed car accident on the way home. People coming over, taking Izuku, raising them to be a weapon, a killer. And, well, yeah. Giving him and experimenting on quite a bit. Over the years, Deku, well, had the personality of killing him. The Jack the Ripper personality. And stuck with that for a long time. Going on several missions. Killing people and just looking like a damn, well, the Reaper, you could say. At first, he was just the Reaper. Then he got... Then he was just saying, I'm Jack the Ripper. And saying that to whoever he met, though, kills almost immediately. Though there are some cases that his name did get out. And people like All Might, Sir Naide Aizawa, Nezu did look for him. Though that would stop. Why? Well, when the people that had taken Izuku found out that Izuku actually realize what they're doing to them because they're basically drugging him in with his food and just making sure he can't remember anything when izuku saw what they were doing to him on a mission he went rogue he left and what he did was he found out what they did to him all those modifications to his body the it's not even his body anymore it's just a robot he genetically they it's a fuse between metal and machine or human and metal. He's not human anymore. Or not. Because whenever he was in the Jack the Ripper state, all he could do was kill, kill, and kill. And there was a rare chance they always found out he was actually Izuku Midoriya, the one we know and love. Or at least a more broken one. Though when he did came to as a not completely broken Izuku, he finally broke out of his chains and left. So yeah. And becoming a vigilante, which very shocked different people, as in Sir Naide, Nezu, and stuff like that. Though still up being the name, because he still kills, because he had to expect, accept the fact, and he started killing on his own. Though finding a certain person, a little girl, and treating her like his own daughter. And this is college's, UA is a college, so yeah. And at this point, he's 18. Treating this little girl, or at least this eh, very young girl, at least in her, at least 8 years old, as a little daughter, while he's 18. And, well, yeah. 
Him giving that mentality of his sword is only meant for justice, never for evil. Yes, he would still take lives with that sword, though it would be always for good reasons, or whenever he has to. So yeah, which intrigued all the heroes and even villains. Because when they heard the Jack the Ripper was set free, they wanted him immediately. And any contact with that to him, uh, yeah, either they didn't come back, or they just came back and, well, bloodied and bruised. Them just being scared to say he ain't joining. So the Yakuza, the LOV, the League of Villains, and other people, other gangs tried to get him. So, yeah. And, well, we do have the final days of the 10-month period. Deku was taught of mathematics, science, religion, everything like that. Or what they did actually was in program into it, like a program. Kind of like how you would download information onto like a hard drive. Not even his head's fully, well, a brain, like how everyone else is in the real world, in the real world is. So, yeah. And also, you must be asking yourself, doesn't he look, well, very out in public, wouldn't he stand out? Yeah, so he can more or less take some of his features off of his body. Like what? Like those little shards you have on his shoulders? He can take off that little face mask, or the face mask so you can actually see ears. And those, the sword he can take off, and the rest, and the feet can look slightly like, well, human feet at times. Though really, he just puts really big socks on them and just covers them with shoes. So, yeah. Though whenever he is on vigilante duty, it's what you see in this picture. And, well, before the, well, UA entrance exam, Deku is looking after his sister. And he is making, well, dinner for her. With her even helping. Then they hear a boom. The wall across for them, which leads to a, well, because it's kind of like there was a balcony, so it got blown up. The, Deku immediately grabbing his sword, taking out of the sheath, and raising it up just to see a person with a goatee tied back hair or a what is it called his hair in a little knot in the or a palm not palm palm what is it i'm sorry everyone that can say the hairstyle like it's laid back If you haven't seen the guy that has owns this sword, all right, I'll just be frank. You probably already know who it is, but it's the person who owns that sword in the beginning of Metal Gear. And he just says, "So you're the person who I was sent to capture." Deku just saying, "If you want me to join your well organization, that you're sadly mistaken." The guy's saying, oh, you think we're trying to, him chuckling at that, just saying, and Deku just trying to buy time and, well, get something by his, near, near him. With the guy just like, trying to explain, saying, we're here to capture you and bring you back, back to your little hole. Deku's saying, starting to be pissed off because he didn't like it there, saying, oh, why would I ever come back? Him just saying, you don't have a choice. With them ensuing a swordsmanship fight. And the timer on his visor, because he did put his visor down, is going down, down, down the timer. With it hitting zero. And all you hear is the roaring of the engine, like vrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
Yes, it might not be able to shoot lasers, but still. It's basically like Sean Hobbs. Kind of those bike in that bike, bike versus McLaren scene. It can't do that, but still, that was pretty dope. So, yeah. Let's get back to the story. And him putting a helmet on her that was on the bike. And telling the bike to leave. The bike ensuing to jump off the hole and running away. Or not, and running away, I should say, to be more accurate. Deku, the guy getting up, and him just staying Honestly, we didn't really care about her. We're just gonna leave her here. Deku is saying, "I know, but it's still that she could never get hurt." I, him looking and down and just saying, "She's probably the one person I always have to protect, no matter the cost. I would die for her." Him just saying, "It's a shame that you couldn't be a hero. You're so honorable. If only we didn't take you." With them ensuing another sort of fight. Two leading of Deku losing one of his arms and getting kicked out that building. Heading into a sewer. Being very well bloody and damaged. Whether it be oil or just blood out of coming out of him. The guy thinking he just killed him. With the radio on his with the earpiece on his head or on his on his ear just saying, Why'd you kill him? We needed him. Him just staying sorry and he'll get the body. Not going down to the hole that well, Deku made and not finding it. Him just saying, oh. Him going to the comms and saying he's not dead though he's injured severe. And Deku's trying to get to his well, daughter. And who is this daughter? I've been saying daughter but I never gave her name. Hmm. I don't want to call it. Mm, what? Her name is Lily. Lily, yes. She doesn't have a last name, though she took the name of Izuku. So, Izuku Midoriya. Or, sorry, I should say, Lily Midoriya. And, well, yeah. Him seeing the bike in a warehouse and him coming out of a sewer drain. Kicking the pipe open and putting it back. And, when one of his hands... And him having two things in one hand. Well, that being his arm that got severed and his sword. Very damaged. Him seeing his younger sister, or not younger sister, I'm very sorry. His daughter, they, well, they think each other's, well, father and daughter. Him just seeing her crying and him just saying, are you okay? Her looking back and hugging Deku saying, I thought you were going to die or I thought you were going to get hurt. Deku saying, I'm fine. Just saying, honestly, I can just fix my arm. And he does. The night he just tries to calm his daughter down. Or tries to calm Lily down. While fixing his arm. And when he does fix his arm and reattaches it. Lily meets and goes to grab it. And him tr giving her a hug. Just stating, don't worry, I'll always be here for her, for you. Yeah. Now, when the heroes heard that whole scenario and saw well where Jack the Ripper as they call him lived yeah it looked like there was two people living there a young girl and a well Ray or as we all know Deku with them wondering why there was a well hole in the wall to be blunt though yes they all saw the helicopter that didn't come and leave with the people being in it or some coming in it that had a sword looking like this. And yeah. Also, Raiden is still not the best. Yes, he, he's not the best swordsman. And the other guy has, well, years of experience. So, experience versus less experience. experience the more experience is going to win. Yeah. Strength wise, they're at equal footing. It's just more or less technique and swordsmanship. That. The other guy won. That was the only reason why he won. Yeah. And, well, Deku is more or less getting information on the guy. I should, I don't know. I haven't seen red, the red gears in a long, the metal gears in a long time. 
though, if you have anyone who wants to say in the comments, because I really don't think I'm going to finish this in one episode, you can say it, and I would very much appreciate it. And, well, the guy him finding more information on which leads to more bodies dropping more and more. Him going back to his older ways, though him trying to stop and get back in control, get control of his emotions. Because whenever he thinks about that place, the where the experiments had on, changed him, killed his mother for that, crying out loud. Yeah, not happy feelings to be, well, to be just saying, just saying. And after several more, after the, and in the 10 months fine, something happens. He, well, tells his younger sister to go and go to her, go, and they, they go to several warehouses, a safe house that she can be taken care of. Him telling her to go there and, well, paying off a lot of people to keep shut about her. So she is very protected. And even so, they are still armed. Well, secret turrets that he does put in place. Why? Because he still thinks that people can buy those people off of him. Because if you, well, compare a, well, a, mm, a big company that probably has billions of dollars versus a person that, like, with range just stole some money worth a couple millions, yeah. Who do you think would win in money-wise? Though nothing happens. I'm saying that now. And him going off to where we see, well, some of the Gears fights. Him facing off that girl that has a lot of arms or those, like, robot with arms things. I don't know what to really call that. Don't really know what to call that. Him winning and severing her head. Him sending a picture. A, well, a picture on a burner phone and with the boss of that organization getting seen it. And well, he's not, he's not happy, but he, he's not mad. He just, hmm, so he's going to be a nuisance, huh? And which leads to several more fights with higher and higher people. Like that guy that can fly, though. Deku takes him out, and it leads up to the, more or less, him versing that guy with the sword. I don't know his name, so I'm very sorry. And, well, the, with Deku having that little more experience now, over two years, and a little bit, he takes him out. Though, over this time, he has met that dog. The, well, I don't know what's, I don't know what... I don't know what's called, but I'll just call him the dog, that metal dog. And, yeah. Which he does take the sword. And the final boss, you do in see Metal Gears. The CEO of that company. With him having that same techno power. Though it's actually a quirk. So any damage I does take is... He completely nullified and absorbed as energy. Think of more or less like Adam's power. Though instead of his sword, it's his body. If any of you seen Ruby. And it does give a black. Whenever does, his body does get hit by a hard force, it does more or less look like it's black. Like a black skin. Like a black rubber, you could say. Which leading so, yeah... A lot of fighting and his written sword actually breaking the one you can see in the picture which leads to him getting the this sword him well what you th might think in the metal metal gear show well kills the guy ripping his heart out and at this point he did give that dialogue saying I told you my sword was for justice, never evil. I would wield it in. Well, give me that whole dialogue. I haven't seen that dialogue in a long time, though I, don't, I do know the majority. Though the final words he just said, it's, But this isn't my sword. And continues to, well, what, what you might think. 
take him out, killing him and taking his, not taking his mantle as he said. Deku, well, he really doesn't care, and that agency can go to hell for what he cares. With his new sword he's armed with, and heroes are suing. Deku being unable to, well, take care of the heroes. Why? Well, all the top 10 heroes. So, getting hit by all of my gang flamed by Endeavor, getting shot with pointy things by Hawks, yeah. That's gonna take a little toll on him. He might be an overpowered badass, but one overpowered badass against 10 other very cool badasses. Yeah. Sorry to say, Raiden, or sorry to say, Deku, you ain't winning that fight. With him being knocked out and taken to the UA, why? Well, that's literally where the most heroes are in the entire of Japan, and where they can easily keep guard of him. So, yeah. And them asking questions. Raiden being actually co cooperative. Answering every question. Him just saying that was out of revenge, and, yeah. Them asking what happened to him. Him just saying he was taken from his mother when he was a baby. Also, how does he know? Well, in those two years span, he found out the full truth of getting information and what they did to him. Yeah, which only made him more angry and wanting more revenge. So, yeah. With you do have Nessu saying, so... Basically, they made their own weapon that backfired drastically and they, it killed them. It killed them, right? Dick was saying this, in short, yeah, that's basically what happened. Nezu just saying, so, if I were to, if you were to become a hero, what would you do? Deck with all my just saying, how can you possibly think of him being a hero? With Hawks just staying, all might. Why is Hawks there? Well, he is a very governmental fit. He's more or less a in between governmental officials and actual heroes. He's kind of like the message boy that but he also has some leeway in the military and in the police organization you could say so he can get around and Hawks is saying Hawks is stating all might you realize what they did to him and you still think of him as a villain they tor they basically tortured him for his entire life basically and him saying almost Though I did find some happiness in my, well, down, when I was mad, and I found someone to care about. And I'm just saying, oh, and who might that be? I'm saying, one day a family died on my watch. I was a mercenary for them, and I let their daughter die. Even though, well, the daughter didn't know, because he does keep this away from the lily. So she doesn't know. And, well, him explaining what happened. That now she she thinks of him as his father and, yeah. Nezu being a little more, well, saddened. Why saddened? You might ask. Well, a person that's been through hell, you could say, still cares about people. Still wants to help. Though realizes his sins are, well, can't be forgiven. They can't just disappear and he's well aware of it which is why he goes down that path the path of non-justice the non-law way so yeah all my finally begrudging and yeah deku just saying you can have all my weapons and you can even restrain me if you want nezu though i get full custody over my daughter i'm not which is not negotiable nezu just saying that's fine by me it would be a shame to just rip that girl away from you. And him saying, and one thing, him saying, what is it? Him saying, can you put her in school? I, she, seeing how I was, and that's stopping him from speaking anymore, just saying, it will be done. We need to train the young so they can become more, they can be better than the old. And yeah. Though them going over some top, sensitive top, top topics for him. And well, when he does go to UA, he needs to be handcuffed. And seeing he can't really kill the people. He can kill people that, he, he can kill people, yes, but 
it, he needs their blood on him to affect his work. So he's going to be in very heavy-duty handcuffs with his hands, not his legs, because they they realize, like, well, yes, he might be a lethal weapon, though he still needs to walk, and, well, yeah. And they do have to do some school things for him. Which leads to the him letting the the mall seeing the daughter. What daughter does this look like? Well, I'll sh let's see. I never gave you the specifics of who his daughter was, though. In the story, she's an older, like a young woman, a mid-aged young girl that is white hair and some, I believe. Hmm. I think it was blue eyes. And yeah, I'll just say she looks like that. Just imagine a younger version of her. And with that, we do end part one of what if Deku was Raiden from Silver Gears. Now, I hope you all enjoyed this episode. I actually, I wanted to do this and I couldn't wait of doing it tomorrow. So this first episode is going to be done today. Now, I did see how I'm getting over, I'm almost at the 50 subscriber mark. And well, damn, yesterday I was at 11 subscribers and I'm about to reach over 50 subscribers. So, thank you in that degree. And who knows, I might be at 60 by the time I wake up tomorrow. You almost doubled my subscriber count when I last night. So who knows? And well, I hope you all have a lovely day, a lovely life, and wear a mask.